Hey, it's Brett. Thanks for dropping by my channel. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back. So today I wanted to talk about June wrap up. I read 11 books, all very different. I really enjoyed everything that I read this month. So stick around. We'll talk about it. All right. So first, as always, I just want to update everybody on what I'm, I'm currently reading right now is Change by Edouard Louis. This is the follow-up to his book, The End of Eddie, also an autobiographical novel that was about a young boy growing up in a very rural section of France who is discovering that he's gay, is very abused by not only his family, but his, his friends and classmates. I should say classmates, not really friends. This is the follow-up where he is now a teenager and working to get himself out of his life and getting on with it. Um, it's immediately captivating. I've really, really, really enjoyed it. It reads really fast, beautiful writing, uh, translated by John Lambert. It's, it's great. The other thing which I have been savoring so much, and I've talked about this before too, is, uh, well, How to Write an Autobiographical Novel by Alexander Chi. I'm down to the last two essays and as you can tell i've marked this thing up like crazy it is so chock full of just nuggets of wisdom of information if you've read um edinburgh by chi there's a whole chapter devoted to how he came about writing that uh, it, it's just exquisite i can't recommended enough and is probably going to go down as one of my favorite books of all time. I just think it's so such a masterwork of craft and art artistry <laughs> and artistry. It's beautiful. Okay, so here we go. 11 books. These are in no particular order, although I am going to start with the most recent thing I read first, which is Bear by Julia Phillips. I really, really, really liked this book. And the more I've sat with it, I've liked it even more. Um, this is about two sisters who live on an island off Seattle who are taking care of their dying mother. And one day a bear shows up. She based this very loosely on the grim fairy tale Snow White and Rose Red. But... It's what happens and the kind of wedge that gets drawn or pushed in between she and her sister, about the one sister, Sam, and her other sister, Elena. It is so good. It's immediately accessible. You're sucked right in. Um, and this kind of mounting suspense begins to build. I don't really want to say too much about it, except you should absolutely read it. Um, Julia next week will be on the Gays Reading Podcast. So if you follow that, please make sure you listen to that before or after you read it. It will be spoiler free, but a really, really, really solid, compelling read. Speaking of solid and compelling reads, Henry Henry by Alan Bratton. I love this cover so much. This is a modern retelling of Shakespeare's The Henriad. I will leave it to anyone down below who wants to dive in on those particular Shakespeare plays because don't know them. I will fully admit it. But here's what I do know. I loved this. I listened to this on audio because as much as I can try to muster up a lot of British accents in my imagination, hearing it actually read was so enriching. It is expertly read by Sebastian Humphreys. He completely brought this text to life. Um, the best way I can summarize this is by saying it is Saltburn for fans of Alan Hollinghurst. It is sexy, it is smutty and messy, it is really smart, it is a coming-of-age novel in a year where we're having so many, especially queer coming-of-age novels, but I have to say all of them are so individual and so good and have such really distinct voices, and this is a prime example. Um, I really 
couldn't get enough of it. I loved it. I thought it was really smart, really compelling, um, with complicated characters and a protagonist that you actually absolutely found at times just a train wreck. But a lot of it makes sense why he is as you get further into the book. It, it, it was great. Okay, also going to be on the Gaze Reading Podcast. Actually, it was this week on the Gaze Reading Podcast is Ocean McKenna. I'm blocking his name. With Evenings and Weekends. Great book. Great book. I loved this. Uh, about a group of friends in London. They're all connected and what transpires. Uh I get. I don't want to tell you anything because I really don't want to ruin any of the, the the great joys of discovery of this book. It's a great collection of people, um, all kinds of uh, genders, sexualities. Really interesting. I, it also very much makes London its own character in kind of the way that Sex and the City does with New York City. I think this would be an amazing uh, limited series, and I think you could do it ongoing, and every year would be a new cast and another kind of story, or you could even set it in a different city every year, but um, really, really, really smart and fun and um, a great, great, great summer book. And also, please check him out as well on the Gaze Green Podcast. All right, Headshot by Rita Bullwinkle. This was a mixed bag for me. I I loved the concept of this book, which is uh, a series of young girls fighting in boxing tournaments um, that basically what Rita does is each section is one of the fights and it whittles it down until there's two the two final girls battling it out. So you don't have to be a boxing fan to appreciate this book because really what she does is she's going into the internal monologues of the two girls in each fight as it's going on. Like I said, I loved this concept. I did find about halfway through, I was getting a little confused as to, wait, who is who and who's winning and There was a certain sameness to the actual matches themselves that I didn't feel they started to become distinct enough. So I don't know that it 100% worked for me, but again, conceptually, I think it's a really, really, really cool idea. The Future was colored by Patrick Nathan. Again, very interesting novel about a... uh, gay Hungarian writer who is living in Los Angeles in the 50s and is writing these kind of creature features, you know, like Mars Attacks or something of of those kind of films. Um, But it's also during the whole McCarthy era, and he's incredibly frightened of being exposed for that. Uh, And yet one of his co-workers, he doesn't know if he's gay or straight, so there's that undercurrent. It's not a very long book. There's a lot going on here. Uh, Patrick Nathan has written this really smart, insightful book. The second half of it um, starts to get a little crazy. And I say that in a good way, not like it goes off the rails at all. It's really thoughtful. It brings up a lot of interesting points. This could be something that is uh, interesting for a book club. All right, Sapphire Dawn, if you saw my interview with Chris Rice, you'll know all about this. Uh, But very quickly, this was really, really fun. This is the fourth book in his Sapphire Cove series, Um, these male-for-male romances. This is not my normal kind of go-to thing, but I have to say I really loved this. I thought it was written with such a sense of humor. These characters were sharp and funny and witty to me, and not just the men. There's plenty of supporting women in here that were really kind of great. So uh, totally entertaining, really enjoyed. Also this month on the Gays Reading Podcast, all this and more by Pung Shepherd. This I won't go into with great detail about because I kind of did last month when I was talking about big July releases. This is that 
choose your own adventure story that takes place with a woman going on a game show called All This and More, a reality show, sorry, who uh, sets out to rewrite her own history and her future. So it's really fun. Again, great book for a book club group because it would be fun to see who chose what ending and where everybody ended up. You can also read it cover to cover without choosing a particular path, uh, but I, of course, wanted to go and, and, and do what it was set up to do and, and follow the path. So, um, yeah, that's out now, and check her out on Gaze Reading in about two weeks. Same as it ever was by Claire Lombardo. Um, okay, so I absolutely loved the most fun we ever had, and I couldn't wait to get my hands on this. I had a very strong reaction to this at first, full disclosure, but only because Julia, the protagonist of this, was really prickly, was making some decisions that were driving me crazy, and to be honest, I, I felt like I was getting, I hate the word, but triggered with my own crap. So I had no intention of stop reading it. And I'm really glad I didn't because I felt like so much of her gets redeemed. And I think that Claire Lombardo, I'm, I'm amazed at her that this is a woman who's in her mid-30s writing about a, 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 a 25-year marriage and a woman who's almost 60 years old. Um, she's truly gifted. She's truly a delight. Uh, she also was on the Gaze Reading Podcast, and you could check her out. We had a great conversation. But I ended up really liking this, and more than that, totally respecting it and where it went. And the fact that she created a character that wasn't always likable, but Ultimately, I felt like that's what made her more real and more identifiable. So I ultimately really, really, really liked it. The Road to the Country by Chigozi Obiyama. Oh my God, you guys, this is fantastic. I mean, get ready for book prize season, and I think this will be at the top of it. Uh, you know, He's been nominated twice for the Booker Prize. I am absolutely certain that this... Let me say, I will be shocked. I can't be absolutely certain. I will be shocked if he is not nominated. And having not seen anything else, what even can be in contention, I would be shocked if he doesn't win. This about a young man whose brother goes missing and he goes to search for him and he gets conscripted into the Biafran War or also known as the Nigerian War. I had to look it up. I really didn't know anything about it. So like Google was my friend when I started this thing. It is a war novel. It is a brutal war novel as he goes to try to find his brother desperately wanting to get out of this front line to see if his brother is safe, where his brother is. It's about the soldiers that he becomes friends with and a woman who is a soldier and there for her own reasons, who he begins a love affair with. It is brutal and beautiful and exquisitely written. Um, I didn't know what I was getting into, and I, I, I just think it's great. Certainly one of the best books of the year. All right, The Stardust Girl by Yumi Katase. Um, I really liked The Deep Sky, Yumi Katase's first book. So when Flatiron reached out and asked me if I'd like to read the new book, I was very excited to thank you. Um, and it did not disappoint. This was originally pitched, I think, by Yumi, who said it's, going, it's kind of uh, Indiana Jones in space, which I get that. But to me, it's much closer to Star Wars because of all the characters, all the creatures, all the different worlds it's really fun, though. It's it's totally action-packed. It's very smart, really fun characters, including this um, octopus-like creature who kind of is at the center of it. Um, if you're at all a sci-fi fan, I would definitely, definitely add this to your summer reading list. All right, we're down to the last two. Uh, Bad Habit by Alana S. Portero. This totally surprised me, and thank you, Harper Via, for this. This is about a young 
trans woman growing up in Madrid. And it's her story. I have to be honest, when I started this, I thought it was uh, an autobiography. I didn't know that it was a novel. Um, and I have to say, I'm really excited because Alana is coming on the podcast at the end of the month, and we haven't had that conversation yet. So I'm interested to know how much is fact based on fiction and fi fiction, how much is fiction based on fact. I loved this book. I think it's so well written. I think the characters in here were so beautiful and interesting to me. Uh, I loved all of the culture of it. It, it. it really was this lovely, simple, beautiful book. And last, Pretty by KB Bookins. KB was also just on the Gaze Reading Podcast. Once again, you can see by how much I've marked it. I thought they wrote a beautiful, beautiful memoir. At times, it's, it really is just a collection of essay, essays that focus on queerness, on blackness, um, on masculinity, on femininity. It's really stunning. In a way, I wish I would have listened to this only to hear it in their voice. So, but it doesn't matter. Really terrific book. I really liked it. So, uh, really no real stinkers. I feel like I'm really having a solid year. So this is my question for those of you who are stuck this far. I was going to do a second quarter faves, but I might just jump ahead and do a halfway top 10. Let me know what you think about that as opposed to second quarter faves. Or I could do a second quarter faves and then follow up a little bit later, like a week later, with halfway top 10. Let me know below. And uh, if nobody answers, I'll just make a decision. <laughs> all right. Thanks again for stopping by. I hope you're all having a great week wherever you are and that you are staying cool. And I will see you guys all soon. Thanks.